All right, everyone out there in Mandolin land, Mike Heading here, coming to you today with a little bluegrass pentatonic lick. This is a, a cool lick that works out of an up, up the neck position. I've heard mandolin players like Sam Bush use a lick like this. Ronnie McCurry uses a lick like this in his song Quicksburg Rendezvous, which is super cool. And I think it's actually kind of originally a Vassar Clements fiddle style lick. So let me break it down and I'll show you a couple spots you can use this lick. Let's jump into it. All right, so this is gonna be a closed position lick. So what closed position means is that we're not gonna be using any open strings. So the benefit to that is once we get the lick down, we can move it wherever we want to play it in a different key, which is really cool. Okay, we're gonna start with our pinky. Let's do it in G first, the key of G. So we're gonna start with our pinky of our left hand up on the 10th fret of the E string, the high E string. Okay, and we're gonna do, this is gonna be good pinky practice for this lick. We're gonna play the 10th fret, and then the 7th fret on the E, and then the 5th fret, and then the 10th fret on the A string. So you have It's just kind of walking down these notes, D, B, A, and then G, right? Just an octave up. Okay, and then we're gonna go down to the seventh fret with our second finger, fifth fret with our first finger. So you have, and then ninth fret with your third finger on the D string, and then seventh fret with your second finger, and then fifth fret with your first finger to end it. So you have and I just filled up that second measure with picking just just to hear the time so you can hear how the timing works out. Let's do it really slow. And I'm doing all down up picking until the very end. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. So. So how I think of this lick is it's a position lick based off your first finger where that's your root note and then you're reaching your pinky up. That's, so that's kind of the position I'm thinking out of. I wanna keep my first finger kind of hovering over these fifth frets my second finger kind of hovering over these seventh frets, my pinky kind of hovering over the 10th fret, and my third finger kind of hovering over the ninth fret, right? Do it really slow. So a couple things I really want you to focus on is keep the same angle of your fingers as you go down the strings this way, right? To lower pitches, right? So notice how I'm not, you know, my hand's not like that and then I'm turning it. You don't want to see a lot of movement in your wrist when you're playing a lick like this, right? The other thing is you need all your fingers to really play on the, the top part, not down here on the pad. You really want to play on the top part of your fingers so you get those notes. If you're back like this too much, you know, when you change strings, you're going to get that clunky sound, right? So. So one way you could practice is like doing some strumming. that you can practice. Otherwise, if you know this shape up here, that bluegrass kind of closed position shape, that's what this, this works out of, right? So, you know, if I was playing like a bluegrass style solo, so now I'm kind of in that shape. This is uh, often referred to as third position in, in violin, so you don't have to remember that, but it's just a good good practice to shift up higher. Okay, so let me show you a couple. I'll show you first how to move the lick around, and then I'll show you just a couple variations once you get it down. Let's do it one more time. And 
then let's sh shift down to F. So same lick now starting on the eighth fret. Really important is using all the same fingers so the lick feels the same. Sam Bush uses this is in the B part to Patty on the Turnpike. Same with uh, Ronnie McCurry. Again, if you have like an F or a G, excuse me, a G, and then F, you know, it's just a nice, it gives your, your solo or your little idea like a theme that you're now playing over the chord changes. So we're taking that lick and moving it like between the different uh, chords, which is really cool. That's like almost like a jazz, jazz way to interpret a melody is playing the same lick over two different chords. Another spot you could use it is if we move it up to A, so go, go up to the, the 12th fret with your pinky to start, is like the, the B part to Salt Creek, right? So if you know that fiddle tune in the key of A, you know, normally the melody is right, like, something like that, right? So if you, if you, maybe you'd already played that basic melody and now you're looking for a little variation. So you could go. Maybe you do a little, you know, just like a different little ending. But again, you hear how that kind of gives like your, your solo a little theme, which can be really cool, right? Same exact lick, same exact fingers. The other thing you could do is move it this way up the strings, right? Because we're only using three strings. D, 12th fret on the A string. So again, I would use this on little ideas where you have like a similar chord change, like a D to a C or a G to an F, kind of going to that flatted seventh chord. We won't get into the theory right now, but A to G, the G is the flatted seven. Um, G to F, the F is the flatted seven to G, and D to C, the C is the flatted seven, right? So it's just a cool little theme lick. Something like that, okay? So lastly, let's just give you a couple little variations. So one, just think of these as positions, right? So you could come up with a different pattern. You know, maybe you go. You know, just mix those notes up in a different order. So remember our notes are. So it's like the major pentatonic scale. So again, you can go down like we did or go up, you know. Just see what you come up with, really. Remember, your, your root notes are here and here. So as long as you end on one of those notes, you know, it'll sound pretty good. You know, that could be like a little lick. Or again, go up. or do a combination. Maybe you start going up and then you go back down, right? You know? And it doesn't always have to be exactly the same either, right? So you could use this position and then maybe on the F I go up, for example, right? You know, so again, you can use that position, keep the position the same, but the actual lick could be slightly different too, right? But I'm always just thinking out of this shape, you know, so. You know, so. So that's, that's the position we're gonna be working out of for that, that lick, okay? So the other thing I would do, remember, is just strum, strum some of the chord too, I think that helps, like strum an A. 
and you can do G. So anytime I'm learning a little lick like that, I always like to play a little of the chord or I'll include some vamping tracks with this lesson. So again, you can hear how the lick sounds over the chord changes, right? Because that's really important to hear how those notes work with the underlying chord changes that we're playing underneath the lead that you're going to be playing. All right, give that some practice, shake it out, get some blood reflow into your fingers if your pinky is hurting, and hopefully that gives you some stuff to practice, and good luck, and keep picking.